So before diving into the main video content, if you guys are new to laser cutting or engraving, I just want you to be aware that certain materials when vaporized can seriously harm you. Some plastics contain things like chlorine or other agents that are dangerous even in small amounts. And that's even with a filtration system. And that's because the filtration systems that we're gonna be talking about and using may not capture all of the fumes and you may still be breathing some of them in. So I'm gonna put a link in the video description down below that addresses some of these materials that are dangerous and the ones that are safe for you guys to process in your laser cutters. If you don't have a data sheet and you don't know what's in a particular material, don't be processing it in your laser cutter. It's just not worth the health risk to the people in your household or in your workplace. In a past video, I explored fume extraction when I was working with resin 3D printing. Since then, I have also experimented with more fume extraction methods for both resin printing and my larger K40 laser cutter. However, lately I've been working with a smaller laser cutter and engraver from Two Trees. It's their five watt open frame unit, the TTS 55. I will have a future video with an in-depth review on my experience with that machine, but working with this machine, it made me rethink my approach to fume extraction. Like many of you guys, I don't have the luxury of working in a large shop. I'm stuck doing most of my projects out of my basement where general ventilation is poor. So when considering my options for dealing with the fumes, I figured I had about three choices for my situation. And I'm sure there are more approaches, but the three that I considered were, so number one, evacuation and relocation, moving the fumes from my basement to the outside. Now this is the approach that I was originally taking with my K40 machine and the resin printers. I was using inline duct booster style fans that move large volumes of air, but don't really generate much pressure. And it worked adequately during the warmer months, but if you live in a cold climate like I do, I'm in Canada, I discovered that the pressure differential between the outdoors and the indoors could not be overcome by the fan. Everything that I was trying to vent to the outside simply got pushed back inside into the basement in the winter time. And this is obviously not ideal. Plus, if you have neighbors close by, and even if you can successfully evacuate some of those fumes, they may not appreciate the smells wafting over to their side of the fence. The second option I considered was filtration and relocation. So I considered the approach that I've seen in many other YouTube videos where people have successfully used filters, and we'll get to more on that in a minute, and large radial fans that can generate enough volumetric flow and pressure to suck the fumes at a distance through hoses and through several layers of filters, and then evacuate to an outdoor location. And I've seen some very nice builds using the BOFA filter modules, but they're expensive at over $300 for a single filter, plus the cost of the large radial fan and the time spent to build a housing around the whole thing. So this seemed like overkill for a very small engraver being used as a light duty machine. And these filtration systems are also really large and take up precious space in your work area. This brought me to my third and final option, which was filtration and recirculation. So I researched some small fume extractor filter units that suck up fumes and filter out the particles and odors. And you can find some cheap Chinese ones for a few hundred dollars, but the reviews are mixed and they generally don't work well at a distance. The volumetric flow rate is quite small because they are small machines. So you would need to build an enclosure around your machine for them to be effective. Now, because I still wanted to use a smaller unit, I had to come up with a slightly different approach where I would be sucking the fumes directly at the source. So this would of course allow me to continue to use a smaller radial fan to save money and space, and now also use a smaller filter unit that would be more affordable for light duty use. If I could make the filtration process efficient enough, then I could recirculate the air and avoid the problem of having to overcome the indoor and outdoor pressure differential. Now, if I could only find that radial fan, perhaps from something many of us already own. It turns out the solution is right here in our common wet dry shop vacs. They're fairly powerful, but also compact, and they have no problem sucking up fumes if you can get the hose close enough to the source of the fumes. So for the Two Trees TTS 55, I designed this adapter to attach a CPAP hose right to the laser carriage, and it's very effective at capturing the fumes right at the source. The CPAP hose is small and more flexible than the shop vac hose, and therefore it didn't obstruct with the accuracy or speed of the carriage. It can also be attached to the small nozzles of shop vacs by simply stretching it over the nozzle. And if you're looking for this adapter for the TTS 55, check my website embracemaking.com or the links in the video description below. With the hose and nozzle portion taken care of, 
Filtering the fumes from the shop vac was the next challenge. And while I'm not an expert in this field, my research led me to some great articles written by the experts about the general approach to combining filters to capture certain sized particles generated by various activities such as laser cutting, soldering, welding, etc. So I'm going to put those links in the video description and we can check those out if you guys are interested in more in-depth reading. Without going super in-depth, the basic summary is that most combination filters use three types of filtration media. And so the outer layer is a pre-filter to capture larger particulates bigger than 0.3 microns. And this prevents the inner filters from getting clogged up. And it turns out that there is a very inexpensive household product that can do this. And we'll get to that in a moment. The next layer is the well-known HEPA filter. These pleated filters are found in many household air purifier systems in various configurations like round cartridges or flat panels, and they filter particles down to 0.3 microns. After that, you can optionally get ULPA filters. Now these are generally found on more expensive combination filters and can filter down to about 0.12 microns. From what I gather, these are more commonly found on medical grade equipment and they won't be found in your common household air purifiers. It would be great to have this in my filter system, but I couldn't find any filters or filter material at a reasonable price. And from what I can tell, this type of filter isn't even used in the highly regarded BOFA filters, so I didn't really pursue sourcing this material. Lastly, to deal with the odors, activated carbon filters are used. And you can find these in many of those small solder fume extractors, and they basically look like black spongy material. Now some shop vacs actually have optional cartridge filters that can be installed over the ball cage. However, most of these are paper filters and they're not suitable for fumes. Some manufacturers do offer HEPA filters, but that is only one out of the three filter mediums that we need. And these filters are also usually quite expensive and their availability is hit or miss depending on the brand. What I ended up doing was buying a few filter replacements for very popular air purifiers and seeing what I could get to fit inside of the shop vac. I didn't want to do external filters because I wanted to save space, and I didn't want awkward filter boxes dangling from hoses. And it turns out that I found the perfect size replacement cartridge filter on Amazon, and it combines HEPA and activated carbon in one very affordable unit. I'll put a link to that in the video description as well. To get it to fit inside of the shop vac, I prototyped with a 3D printed adapter on my really old cheap 2.3 gallon vacuum, and had great results. To get it to fit, you just simply pop off the old float ball cage and install the new adapter. The filter fits between the bottom adapter and the top cover. Once installed, you can turn the vacuum on and cut paper towels to fit over the filter. The vacuum force, with the vacuum being on, conveniently holds the paper towels in place while you secure them with elastic bands. And yes, that's right, paper towels are a great pre-filter. Two to three layers of good quality paper towels can successfully filter out the bulk of the large particles. And that's gonna save your HEPA filter underneath from getting clogged. You probably already have them in your home and it's cheap and easy to replace when they get fouled. To test my adapter, I turned the vacuum on and burned incense to see if my adapters had any leakage that would result in fumes not being filtered. Incense works great for this because you can see the smoke and you can see where it's being sucked into and it also has odor. So if the fumes are being sucked through the filter and you can't smell them coming out of the vacuum exhaust, then your filter is working. So I had some great initial results and I installed the prototype on my two trees machine and started lasering. The adapter on the carriage worked excellent and even the old tiny two horsepower shop vac had enough grunt to suck up all the fumes at the source. Now it greatly reduced the smell of the burning wood. It didn't completely eliminate it but it did get rid of all of the smoke. So I have a smoke detector directly above my workspace and it didn't go off once. Now I figured I could probably do slightly better with the odor elimination, so I purchased some extra carbon filter material. And although the cartridge filter already had some on the inside, another layer would likely make it even more effective. I'm gonna put a link to that material in the video description and you guys can get large sheets of that for very cheap and you can cut them to size. Mine even came with a little Velcro strap that holds it nicely in place once it's inside of the cartridge filter. More sniff tests confirmed that extra carbon filter did an even better job at absorbing more of the odors, and I was very happy with the results. I could easily laser wood in my basement, and the room was not filled with smoke. Now, truthfully, I could still smell some of the burning wood, but it was leaps and bounds better than what I was dealing with before the system. 
Since my mini shop vac was over 10 years old and some off-brand that likely nobody even uses anymore, I designed a new adapter around the Stanley 4 horsepower 4 gallon vacuum. The reason I chose this one is that it's a common brand across all of North America and can be found at Walmart and Amazon for a very reasonable price. Also, like most products, they're all made in one factory and then rebranded. And so this Stanley vacuum uses the same float ball cage and motor as other four horsepower models made by MasterVac, VacMaster, Porter Cable, etc. And you can take a good look at this float ball cage and if yours looks like this and you have a four horsepower vacuum, my adapter should also work for you. Now at this point in time, I've only tested this Stanley four horsepower vacuum, but I'm gonna put links in the video description to vacuums that look identical to the Stanley model that should work from what I can see in photos and videos online. After creating the adapters, of course, I tested the Stanley vacuum and it worked like a charm. To ensure that there was no vacuum leakage around the lid, I also experimented with some foam tape to create a better seal around the lid. And you can find this kind of foam tape at your local dollar store or hardware store. I felt like this made a slight improvement on the suction, but honestly, I have no quantitative data to support this. It's just an idea for you guys. I also experimented with 3D printing a diffuser and lining it with more carbon filters. However, this simple diffuser only marginally reduced the noise and odor, so it seemed to be more trouble than it was worth. Unfortunately, not all experiments are a success. One method that did work to reduce the noise if you find a shop vac annoying, or if you have too much suction for materials that don't produce a lot of smoke and fumes, you can actually use one of these router speed control units to decrease the speed of your vacuum motor and the noise. It works great and it can also be used for other on off single speed motors. Again, I'll put a link to one of those in the video description down below. Now one other advantage to this system that I want to mention is that it assists in drawing fumes away from your laser lens so they do not settle on the lens and foul it or block and diffuse the laser while it's in use. Now you're still going to have to periodically clean your lens but perhaps you will not have to do it as much. It won't be as strong as an air assist system, but it won't push the fumes everywhere into your workspace like the air assist could. One final advantage to this system is that when you're not using it as a fume extraction unit, while it's still a shop vac, you can always pop the filter off and reinstall the original float ball cage and the vacuum bag. There's no permanent modifications necessary to the vacuum, and who doesn't need a shop vac in their makerspace? So that's it. Let me know what you guys think about this filtration system down in the comments section below. If you guys are interested in building one of these for yourself, check out the video description down below because I'm going to put all the links in there for the materials and various things that you're going to need to build one of these for yourself. And in the future, I'm hoping to expand the lineup of vacuums that these things are compatible with, as well as all of the adapters and things that you'd need for various other hobby grade laser cutters and engravers. And so lastly, full disclaimer here is that this system that I've designed and developed is for light duty applications only. If you guys have a high powered laser cutter or engraver, go ahead and spend the money on a professional grade machine. It'll be worth every penny. It's going to obviously pair well with your professional grade machine. If you try and build one yourself, it might work out, but you're also gonna spend a lot of time and money on iterating through all the different designs till you get to something that's probably still not as good as the professional grade machine. But for the average hobbyist who's just cutting and engraving once in a while, this thing will save you guys a lot of money. And as I had mentioned earlier in the video, because I'm using very common filters, these filters will be available for a long time to come. So that's it for this project. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my website, embracemaking.com. And if you like this video or appreciate the content that I'm creating, please engage with it in some way, shape or form. You could leave a like on this video or a comment in the comment section down below. See you guys in the next video.